Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, especially to our guests and visitors today. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Really a beautiful Sunday. I, I love how this, this day, all the readings fit together, and of course, singing A Mighty Fortress is Our God. I think it's one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Uh, the, as well as the importance of the message that we hear today, which has to do with temptation. So we'll get to that. The order of service will follow, and we're following today is Divine Service Setting 3, page 184. It is, of course, printed in full in our bulletins along with the hymns that we sing. And the opening hymn we'll be singing is 505, Trying God Will Be, Be Thou Our Stay. Uh, God the Father Be Our Stay. We'll be singing the, this, this versification with the individual names of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, before we join in singing that over the hymn, we'll take time to rise and greet one another with the peace of the Lord.
Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you you can can be 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 my sin. We kneel. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk to the wilderness of this world for the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the first, first Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, doing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to, to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from, from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock, and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she is the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 32. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Through 
my groaning all day long.
us together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hymn 656, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for meditation today is our Gospel reading, Matthew 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All of these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is our text. You may be seated. <clears throat> Dear Christian friends, tempted by the devil, that's what life is like for us in this life. And we know it. Again, at the, at the beginning of the service, I point out one reason why this seems to be such a, why I like this day so much, is that it's gives a message that is so important for us to hear. We experience being tempted by the devil. We all have, every single human being ever since the event recorded in our first reading today from Genesis 3. Not long after the creation of the world, the first man, Adam, and his wife gave into temptation and disobeyed what God said, what God commanded. When God created this world, he put the first man and woman into a garden he created and gave them a command. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. God gave that command, and then that command was twisted and then disobeyed. At the devil's instigation, the man and the woman ate of that tree, and their eyes were opened. They were opened, but not in a good way. They then knew good and evil, and their relationship with God, their creator, took a nosedive. Instead of peace with God, instead of peace with each other, they blamed each other and the creation, even God himself. The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit and I ate. Oh, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And what God said came true. They ate and they died. Pain and suffering came into the world. A cursed creation and hard work and sweat came into the world. Death came into the world. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. God's promise also came into the world, but I want to get to that in a minute. Temptation by the devil has been our lot ever since. And people have given in to that temptation. Right away, we see it. Cain was jealous of Abel and killed him. Despite God's direct warning to Cain that sin was crouching at his door and he must rule over it, he did not. He gave in to sin and murdered his brother. Ever since Adam and Eve, we have experienced the work of the devil who has tried to get us to deny God and follow his, Satan's, lying words. Ever since Adam and Eve, the world has brought difficulties and hardships on us and tried to snuff out our faith and cause us to falter. Ever since Adam and Eve, the cares and riches and pleasures of life have tried to choke out our life of faith and kill what God has implanted in us through his word. But God's promise has stood firm. God's promise was there too. Speaking to the serpents and the devil, God promised that Satan's head would be crushed by the seed of the woman, even as his, the seed's heel, would itself be crushed. And Jesus Christ came to be that seed and defeat and crush the devil at great cost to himself, indeed at the cost of his life. But first, Jesus needed to do something else. He needed to experience all that we experience. He needed to face 
temptation himself. And after Jesus was baptized by John, that's what happened right before, we had the word then Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus fasted and then was hungry. 40 days, reminding us of the 40 years in the wilderness that the Israelites faced after being brought out of Egypt. 40 years because they would not obey God and enter the promised land. After passing through the Red Sea, the people of Israel were in the wilderness until God brought them into that promised land. And in the meantime, they suffered like Jesus was baptized and then led into the wilderness to be tempted. And like us, we were baptized, we are baptized, brought into God's family, brought to faith by the word planted in us, growing in us. But where are we? Where do we find ourselves? We find ourselves in the wilderness of this world, experiencing the temptations of the devil. And how do we respond? How do we react facing the temptations of the devil? We need what we just sang about in Martin Luther's great hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. What a great hymn to sing on this day, but how very applicable his words are to the themes for this day. God is a mighty fortress for us, a help in time of need. We do have a foe, uh, the old evil foe who lies and is powerful and opposes us and we can't stand against, against him on our own, which is why God sends for us a fighter, a savior who wins the battle for us. And so even if devils fill the world, which many times they seem to do, we don't need to be afraid. Satan has been judged by Jesus' own work and word, and Je indeed Jesus is. The word that wins the victory for us, the kingdom ours remaineth. Satan began his temptation of Jesus by beginning, if you are the son of God. It was a temptation to try to deny what God had said. Did God really say God tempted Adam and Eve in the garden? Did God really say at your baptism, Jesus, this is my beloved son? It's part of the temptation that we experience, to doubt God's word, to doubt God's care for us, to doubt God's love for us. The devil even misquoted Psalm 91 in tempting Jesus, wrongly applying these words, God, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. He applied those words to Jesus as if God had promised to protect him as he tries to use those words to tempt us, as if God promises to protect us in the way that we think we should go, the way that we think we should travel. But no, God has promised to protect us, but to lead us in his way, in the way that we should go, in the way that Jesus has laid out for us and won for us. And in Jesus, in Jesus' temptation, and Satan's temptation to Jesus, the last one, Jesus speaks words that remind us of something else as well. Be gone, Satan, Jesus said. And Jesus spoke those words later in response to Peter, when Peter tried to contradict Jesus after Jesus had predicted his death and resurrection. Peter said, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you, as if Jesus shouldn't suffer like he had said that he would. But that's what Jesus came to do. It was what Peter and Satan here was trying to divert Jesus from. But going to the cross was Jesus' purpose. It was why he came. Jesus faced the devil there in the wilderness for us. He was tempted for us and he beat him, showing us how we also can be strengthened to fight against the temptations of the devil that we still face. It's a skill we need to learn. The devil still wants to tempt us away from sin in temptations that have been common since Adam and Eve. And the key to fighting temptation is not just to try harder. The key is to trust the victor, 
Jesus Christ. The key is to trust God's word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. When the devil tempts you, and he will, remember how God has claimed you in your baptism. Remember God's promise. Remember whose you are. And God's promises that he fulfilled and gave to us in Jesus. And hold to them. And what happens when we do? The devil leaves. James says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. After Jesus resisted the devil, the devil left and angels came and were ministering to him. Again, a great promise that we see, remembering God's promise to us rightly applied from Psalm 91, for he will command his angels to guard, concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up. You know, we face struggles in this life we face temptations to disobey God's word. And one of the consequences of that is that we think that we are alone. We think that there is no one with us and that loneliness can drive us to the spirit, can drive us to actually listen to that voice of the devil. The word of the Hebrews today from Hebrews is a good, great re reminder to us. We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. So let, then let us hold fast our confession. Jesus is our high priest. He is with us and we are not alone. He knows our weaknesses. He came to be a human being just like us so that he would know our temptation and be able to sympathize with us, but not just to sympathize with us, also to help us, to be our champion. So we can be confident. Have you sinned? Go to Jesus. He won't turn you away. Confess his sin and he will forgive you. Confess your sin and he will forgive you. He will encourage you and help you. He will give you mercy and grace to help in time of need. We sang about it in our psalm today, Psalm 32. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. But when I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity, I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. You forgave the iniquity of my sin. When we are tempted by the devil, what do we need to face that temptation? What do we need to overcome that temptation? We need God's word. Not just the words of scripture, but even more, Jesus Christ, who is the Word. We need Jesus' strength. But we have been promised that, and we have it. Because Jesus came to be one of us, to face the devil for us, and not to sin, but then to take our sin on himself, and go to the cross, and even more, to be raised, and go through the heavens for us, that we might receive mercy, might find grace, might acquire help, in time of a need. That is God's promise to you through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We join in singing the offertory, Create in Me.
and fill those out, pass them to the outside, and returning them back to the center. Teach us to rely upon your word as our defense against the evil one. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, send your holy angel to protect and keep us in your ways, that no evil may befall us. Graciously behold the needy, the sick, and the troubled, especially Zechariah Ailman, Jane Anderson, Joanne Bullman, Bill Carey, Drew Chambers, Doug Chambers, Chris Irvin, Matthew Gibson, Bill Coivisto, Tim Jazerski. Pat Johnson, Teresa Coivola, Julie Reinemann, Pam Reinemann, Wyatt Robinson, Ray and Virginia Rodenwald, Dagmar Siebold, Dave Sorensen, Holly Soroman, Dorothy Thorison, Gary Toon, Tim and Wendy, Tim and Wendy Beard, Pastor Brent Burkish, Doug, Lou Johnson, Alan Krauss, Lois, Sue Luke, Deborah McKeever, Robin Minch, Jerry Murphy, Thomas Murphy, Doug Pariso, Pastor Martin Schoenfeld, Jeff Stevenson, Adeline Silliman, Alan Sorensen, Wally Srock, Jihan Udall, Adeline Williams, and Elizabeth Zubar. Satisfy us with long life and show us your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 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 Almighty God, you covered the shame of our first parents with animal skin and thereby foreshadowed the perfect sacrifice of the shedding of your son's blood 
by which we are cleansed and clothed. Give us the garments of repentance and faith, that we may receive your Son's body and blood for the forgiveness of all our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have given us a refuge from the world in the body of Christ, your church. Protect us from all the evils of body and soul that we would find rest in this life and eternal rest in your heavenly embrace. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Christ, strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, in the true faith, and the life everlasting. Heart, in
unto the Lord, for he is good. refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. upon you and give 